There is another decentralized cross-chain interoperability project that is in the works. It is launching at the end of this month. I have details for you there towards the end of this video called Chainflip. And at first look, it actually does seem like it could be a contender up there with my protocol and Thorchain. None of this is financial advice. Always be sure to do your own research, but let's get into this one. From its main website here, which I gotta say, I do love the branding of, the efficient cross-chain swapping protocol. Chainflip's automated market maker allows users to swap native assets, which is key there, across any chain across any chains with extremely low slippage. It says here, we can forget about bridges, it is composable, and it unlocks non-EVM chains. So you'll be able to swap, say, Bitcoin for Ethereum natively. This project has been in the works since 2020, so this isn't something brand new and thrown together. They've gotten some audits by Trail of Bits, and they've taken that. Uh, I watched recently an AMM that they did. This was uh, October 10th, so about a week ago, and uh, they addressed the audits, they plan to get more audits as they make changes to the code, things like that. So they take security very seriously. The way they're able to keep their slip low and keep things capital efficient is through concentrated liquidity systems, which I don't think Thorchain and Maya Protocol have. So this will be interesting to see. Better pricing with large trades. And then this is something interesting here. Earn fees on native assets. Provide liquidity with assets in their standard form no bridging required. And this is a little bit unique and different than Thorchain and that every pair is USDC. So they have a token that's launching called Flip. And in Thorchain's instance, you would have every pool with Rune in it. So you'd have Bitcoin and Rune, ETH and Rune. But Rune itself is pretty volatile. Here, everything is paired with USDC at the start so that's gonna make it so there's the, the liquidity pools are more stable. So those that wanna earn a little bit more on just the fees and not worry about too much in permanent loss, and they're not worried about price appreciation, might like this setup. The flip token itself, and we're gonna get more into this in a bit, is the powerhouse of chain flip, designed to be self-sustainable. It keeps the ecosystem decentralized, trustless, and secure while rewarding validators for their service. And like Thorchain and Maya Protocol, the mission is to displace centralized exchanges. This isn't just a couple guys building this. They have a pretty robust team of over 30 plus engineers, and they're all doxxed, unless these are just fake names, which I do not think they are. And the reason for that is because of the, the way they're listing the coin. And you'll see what I mean by that in a minute. About the team, Chainflip was founded by Simon Harmon in 2020 as an independent project from within the Oxen Foundation, which I actually really like that that's where they're coming from because they have an app called Get, it's called the Session app. It's free to download and it's a really genuinely private messaging app. So you wanna check that out. Through private fundraising, Chainflip Labs has established established itself as a team of 30 plus engineers, designers, quants, and analysts located in several offices in Berlin, Dublin, and Melbourne, with backing from level-headed framework ventures, blockchain capital, Pantera capital, a lot of names that you would know. I wanna touch on the security here for one second. One thing really important is who is guarding these vaults of native assets within the protocol. If they are doxxed institutions that have to be compliant, that kind of thing, that is almost a complete no-go for me. And fortunately, they don't have that here. You do have your normal potential protocol risks with their, which they're very transparent about in their documentation. But the main focus I wanted to touch on was their security ratio. In Thorchain, for every $1 of non-Rune assets, so like Bitcoin, like that, you have $2 worth of Rune that needs to be bonded to the network to incentivize the nodes not to steal because for every $1 of Bitcoin they could steal, they stand to lose $2 worth of Rune. So that just wouldn't make much economic sense. The flip token is securing the network. So in order to become a validator, you have to auction. You have to join these auctions and churn in. And depending on how much you have determines if you actually get into a slot. And they do have bystander validators just like Thorchain does. But what they do here is they have a one-to-one -one ratio. So they are guarding one-to-one -one the assets. And their thought there is, if you're gonna get 14, 15% APRs, APYs, do you really need to over-collateralize? Because in the long run, 
these validators would be losing to try to steal. But in any case, the ratio of one to one will be enforced by the validator network to prevent buildups of collateral not being fully utilized. So get this, and this is kind of interesting. I'm not sure how I feel about it yet. Let me know your guys' opinions down in the comments. So when the security ratio approaches or exceeds one to one, the validators will be required to automatically purge liquidity held by liquidity providers. Given that refund addresses have already been provided, it is possible to initiate an automatic egress return transaction for any liquidity provider over time. So if there's $3 worth of liquidity in the pools, but for some reason the flip collateral value is less than $3, what they'll do is they'll kick out liquidity that has been put into the system to bring that ratio more in line. So instead of incentivizing more flip purchasing or for the flip value to go up, what they do is instead kick out liquidity providers. Any liquidity not yet deployed in pools would be first to be purged. And then secondly, liquidity held in unconcentrated ranges would be purged next until the security ratio is reduced to below one to one. And then on the flip side of that, you won't be able to necessarily deposit either. If the ratio exceeds 1.3 to one, all deposits will be blocked. A couple notes on the USDC denominated pools because at first, it kind of makes you go, you know, because it is a centralized stable coin. It is worrisome. Maybe they could freeze that collateral USDC on chain or something like that. So chain flip by default, I just have a couple things highlighted I thought were important. Chain flip by default uses USDC as a default pairing for all liquidity pools in the system and USDC as the collateral for that pairing as we went over. The benefits of doing it this way, at least in their opinion, Liquidity providers typically don't want to buy a volatile asset in order to provide liquidity. So think about that with Rune. You might wanna provide Bitcoin liquidity, but if that gives you exposure to Rune, which is highly volatile, you may not be likely to go in. As it is more difficult to manage in permanent loss and there's less liquidity available to enter and exit the position. This creates barriers to entry for competitive market makers. And they do talk about algorithmic stable coins, like maybe Frax or whatever else might come up in the future, like the now you dead US, UST, right? Chainfoot Labs will never advocate collateralizing the protocol's USDC in such assets. And in case there's confusion about, will I need to have USDC to use the protocol, anything like that, Users never have to touch USDC when using Chainflip unless they actually want to swap for it within the protocol. And this part here I really liked. This is not a decision set in stone for decades to come. If a stable coin achieves the level of adoption of USDC with fewer trade-offs, Chainflip will be able to pivot its collateral or add options beyond USDC. Right now, they're in the process of their token sale, which ends on August 31st. However, the registration to participate in this ends on August 28th. They do have a really informative breakdown of what's going on with this token. I'll leave, I'll leave all these links down in the description, by the way, as well. So you can go and check these out, check out the distributions and see if it works for you. The one I wanted to focus on here on this page is some of the prices that these tokens were sold at previously. So on September 2020 to February 2021, people were able to buy the token for between 16 cents. I mean, you've got six cents here all the way up to 32 cents and a main round that went for 50 cents. And the emissions do have what looks like between the nine month and 12 month mark, a pretty aggressive release schedule. So this is just something to keep in mind if you wanna participate in the early, this, pub, this public sale, that in those nine months, uh, there probably will be a token dump, right? Or, and if not a dump, there will be probably some significant sell pressure. The sale date, as mentioned, does end August 31st, 2023, and it is at $1.83 per token. It will have a fully diluted network value of $164 million at the time. It's going to launch with an initial distrib or initial supply of 90 million, but this is one of those tokens, they've largely adopted EIP-1559, which is the Ethereum thing. So they have a similar model. They're gonna have about an 8% token inflation, but there is deflation as well. For every swap that happens, 0.1% of the fee is taken and 
is taken of USDC, it buys Flip, and then it burns it. So although there are missions every single year, it is also potentially deflationary if there is enough volume. The primary utility of the flip token is its role as collateral for the validator auctions. Validators require large stakes to economically secure the funds in the system and safely operate the vaults and accounting logic, earn rewards from the block reward, and maintain the chain flip state chain. The rewards that validators earn are offset by the DEX automatically converting the network fees collected in USD into flip and then burning it automatically with the protocol, as I just mentioned. Flip is also required as gas for liquidity provision and other services in order to process, process instructions on the decentralized exchange protocol. All transaction fees on the state chain are burned. More on the registration for this auction. Unfortunately, I live in the United States, so I am unable to participate. If you click on the register now to go into this, Right, it looks like you need to give everything away. First name, last name, residence, probably gonna have to do an I identity like your driver's license, photo, security quiz, and, and all that, which, um, yeah, I don't know if, even if you're not in the United States, I don't know if you wanna participate in this. Although they are a doxed team, they're trying to play by, you know, the regulations that are coming up, um, might be kind of adversarial, so they're just trying to stay on the right side of it, which I can appreciate, but, for people that may wanna get in to this public sale, might have to wait. Although this has not performed in the wild yet, and there is that sell pressure in nine months to 12 months. So depending on what happens with the market, it might be a better opportunity to buy it after the launch anyways. And then we've got a few other just little facts that I wanted to run through here that I found kind of important. So Chainflip has its own proof of stake blockchain. So it's an L1 called the state chain. To build the state chain, they are using Substrate, which is the framework used by Polkadot and Kusama, and I believe A0 also uses Substrate, probably a few others. Chainflip does not intend to become a parachain, though, and it will be its own standalone chain. You might be wondering if you need the Flip token itself in order to do swaps and interact here, and the answer is no. Users only need the token they want to swap. Flip fees, where applicable, are automatically processed by the protocol for users. And on launch, they aim to support Ethereum, Bitcoin, and Polkadot assets via the Chainflip protocol and integrate with aggregators to maximize asset coverage via native support for cross-chain messaging. From there, they will prioritize the most relevant assets based on user and protocol value. And this also great, Chainflip will be open source after launch. They plan to have a bunch of different aggregation partners, but the one they mentioned on that last AMM I watched was Squid. And Squid is built on Axelar. So that what they plan to do is have the native assets and then kind of aggregate around. And they, I believe, use batching for transactions every block. So they're able to get around potential MEV as well. Overall, to me, it looks like a very interesting and awesome addition to the native cross-chain swapping space. So I can't wait to see how this operates in the wild in a, in a few months. If you're still here, thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button, subscribe, and hit the notification bell, and I'll see you on the next video.